Made it to Manitou Springs, oh man. Okay, this is the first video publishing today on the vlog. The second video is gonna be literally an ice test, 3 p.m. mountain time in the Innovate Arctic Claw 300s. Okay, we're going back up Pikes Peak. Usually I do not like to run the same mountain in back-to-back -back weeks. I like to change it up, keep it, keep it diverse here on the vlog. But today I'm running in the Innovate Arctic Claws which have the micro spikes on the bottom. This is my first time ever running in a shoe with micro spikes and uh, Pikes Peak. I, I'm looking at it right over there, this huge mountain. It has a beautiful sheet of ice on the bottom of it. And so this is gonna be the test for these shoes. And yes, 3 p.m. mountain time. Come check out that video, it'll be publishing. But first of all, I have to run about a, a mile on pavement. And so I gotta start in the Ultra Torrens and then switch over. All right, come on. Okay, for those of you familiar with Pikes Peak, I am at Bar Camp, and uh, I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn around here for a couple different reasons. I think the biggest one is that I think my coat has met its match as far as temperature. It's about 15 degrees up here, and I'll, I'll double check that when I get back to the car. But 
Uh, it's just this coat is not going to be warm enough for going all the way to the top. Unlike last week, it was windier, but it was warmer, much more, quite a bit warmer. So I, uh, I'm going to go back down and get more vertical gain at the bottom. <coughs> it's a little unfortunate because I, I did want to go to the top, but I can tell just looking at the weather pattern. Remember I said that snowstorm is rolling in and I could I can see it kind of kind of accumulating on top. So we're gonna turn around and uh, seven and a half miles to bar camp. So solid, uh, solid, solid. Let's go back down and get some more vertical at the bottom and uh, baby, baby, baby. And I'll talk to you about these uh, Arctic claws uh, back at the car. Oh man, I must say I'm a little tired too. Key word today, ice, ice. A change of plans kind of run today. Okay, even though I was I was thwarted from going to the top and I'm so glad I turned around. I'm just looking at the mountain and it's like socked in. I bet it's getting pretty pretty gnarly up there right now. But because of that, I went and discovered some new trails over in the Garden of the Gods. Oh my goodness, it's this beautiful spot. I didn't do any filming over there with these big red rocks. Just amazing. I, okay, I won't tell you the distance yet, but I do know for a fact I need to hit four strides nice and solid like not all out but just good strides i i'm fully aware i gotta keep that leg turnover up especially after a run like today okay and then we're hopping in to the ice in the innovate 300 uh arctic claws innovate arctic claw 300s all right here we go take this off and get rolling everyone in the park is staring at me Well, the weather forecast was correct. It is coming down and we're gonna talk more about the temperature swings in the second video today, what happens here in Colorado. But first, wanna mention briefly, 26 miles today, 41 kilometers, 7,700 feet of vertical gain and loss, and about 24, that's about 2,400 meters. Good day, solid day. And I tell you what, you know what was almost one of the most fun parts of today? the four strides like my body i must say like i was pretty tired about mile 21 22 and then i got back to the car and ate some food and then i went back out for four more miles approximately and just more on flat to a little flatter terrain and then i got back to the car again and did the strides and it felt i, I don't know i don't know how my form was how did my form look but i just felt I felt really nice. It just felt really good to go a little faster. So i uh, going to keep the strides going, of course, because I know I got to keep that turnover during this early phase of the training block. Okay, shout out to Will. Remember, Will is the gentleman who emailed me first about the Skechers Go Run Pure. <sighs> it's a box inside a box. Box Whoa! Electric blue Skechers logo. Thank you, Mr. Seth James Damore. Amazing just to see like an idea 
of sharing shoes that we're no longer using and boom just like that the shoes arrived at Will's house and I can tell Will as you mentioned in uh, your emails that your son is probably gonna outgrow those shoes pretty pretty quickly but hopefully he can use them for a little bit I'm glad they arrived and looking good let us know how the ride goes just a couple more things to mention I created a new playlist on the channel it's all about racing vlogs so I personally when I'm subscribing to a YouTube channel that that is running focused. I love watching the racing vlogs. I, it might be my favorite genre of uh, running video on YouTube. I don't know. It's hard to beat a good racing vlog. Well, I have filmed pro about a dozen racing vlogs in the past couple years. So the, the playlist is going to pop up upper right hand corner. Go check it out. There's about a dozen, a little over a dozen videos on there now. And yes, we'll get better at filming them. But these are not all of my races, but some of my races over the past two years. If you're interested in diving a little deeper into the, oh my goodness, 1,000 plus video archive. It's a little insane. Okay, and one other thing to mention real quick. These Polar Extreme Thermal Socks are blowing my mind. At $7.99 from the Army Surplus Store. And guess what? Like... My feet are not getting too, because basically the, the the concern with these socks, they're so thick, is that my feet would get too warm. Up on the mountain today, you saw me turn around because I, I felt like my jacket, my Solomon jacket, wasn't going to be warm enough, and I'm really glad I did turn around. Uh, these guys are amazing. My feet are not cold at all, but more, well, not more importantly, but almost just as important is that my feet are not, like, getting too hot. That's another, like, it's, it's a balance. So I'm actually going to look up and see if they are being sold on Amazon. If they are, I'm going to list them down below in the description. And again, they're very thick. If you were in the polar vortex about two or three weeks ago in the upper Midwest, in Michigan, Chicago, Green Bay, these would have been, I would have been very confident to go running outside in these polar extreme thermal socks. So let me check and see if they're on Amazon. You bet. You better believe what is not on Amazon is the right question. Listen, if you have a local army surplus store, go support them. That's what I did. But if you don't live by an army surplus store, maybe you can pick them up down below. Uh, again, this is for like Scandinavia, uh, countries, Canada, Russia, and yes, when the polar vortex blasts down to, uh, to, to the United States, or when you're going up a 14,000 foot mountain like today. And moving on to when runs do not go our way, or when they do not go according to our plan. My hope was to get back above tree line today to get, you know, recruit more of those red blood cells. That's what happens when you run at altitude. And when you get more red blood cells pumping through your, your bloodstream, it means you can carry more oxygen. So that was the hope today was to just get a nice stimulus up there, up high, but I was thwarted. And uh, what's this, how's the saying go? There's no such thing as bad weather, just bad gear. Well, I think, uh, I think I have a jacket inside that I will use on future 14ers when I know it's going to be below 15 degrees. And it's, it's not the temperature, it's the wind, right? I just knew if I, if I pushed it, I was good. I was already cold below tree line and I was working pretty hard. And then I was like, all right, this is not going to work. Unlike last week, it was like 30, yeah, about 30 degrees up on the mountain. It was really windy, but that 15, 15 degree difference uh, made all the difference. Therefore, uh, I had to turn around and it was hard mentally to turn around before I wanted to. In fact, I decided, okay, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to add on elevation down below. I still wanted to get some more vertical gain in my legs today and I accomplished that. But I think, and this is the crazy thing, especially for, now listen, high schoolers out there watching, uh, we can talk more about like track workouts at some point, but actually no, I'll mention it here in a second. Ultra runners and marathon runners, you know, you know there's going to be lows in your race where you just don't feel good. Like maybe the elite marathon runners, like some of them look like so effortless, but most of us human beings, we go through low points in our races. Therefore, I think, and this actually connects back to last week when we talked about mental toughness. I think, again, it's really important to go through those moments, especially for ultra runners. I'm not sure for marathon runners because I'm, I haven't raced a marathon yet, but especially for ultra runners to 
really be thwarted and turned around and defeated in a training run like today. And listen, it wasn't anything major, but it was a mental like smack in the face. Like, okay, you're not going to get to the summit today. It's okay. Use this as an opportunity to build some mental toughness, not to give up on the day. And sure enough, I hit the mileage I wanted to. I, I found a new trail. I didn't film that section, but I found a new trail. It was amazing. And I got the vertical gain I wanted. So just wanted to mention that. Uh, I'm sure you go through this. Oh yeah, and track workouts. If I was a coach and I assigned an eight by one K repeat workout, I just realized the light turned off back there. I apologize. Let me see if I can turn it off. I was using that battery all day, and so it's pretty low, so it might turn off again, and we'll just have to keep rolling. So, therefore, uh, I, if I was assigning an 8x1K workout, and I saw one runner, maybe two runners, falling off the back, and they were just struggling, I know that happened to me a little bit in college, I would, if I was the coach, I would pull them aside, talk to them, see how they're feeling, maybe have them go jog for five minutes just to see if they can loosen up a little bit. And then if they still don't feel good, if something's just off, um, and, but they still think they can get some work in, I would reduce the uh, reduce the distance of, of the interval from a, a 1K maybe to a 600 or to, a, to an 800. So anyway, workouts, and they don't always go according to plan like today, case in point. Uh, but we keep fighting, right? No matter, it's, it's like, you still got a stimulus. Don't forget that. And that's, oh, that's another topic. I won't get into it now, but you, you still are getting a stimulus as long as you're getting out your front door. Okay. No matter, frankly, even how short it is or how slow it is, uh, you're still getting an aerobic stimulus and that's a good thing as runners, right? Okay. Moving on to did I already give the keyword? I believe I did. Oh yeah, ice, ice, yes, in the water. And the question of the day, have you ever fallen on ice during a run? Today, okay, I didn't, okay, well, I'm not gonna say it yet. I fell in high school pretty hard on a paved road. I think I've probably fallen two or three times pretty hard in 20 years. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So that's the question of the day. And hopefully you didn't get hurt. But if you have any crazy stories, let us know uh, down below. And yeah, gosh, we're okay. Again, publishing video number two, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, all about running on ice in the Innovate Arctic Claw 300s. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. What a day. Love ya. Sleep beauty. Work hard. Love each other.